Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the very first episode of The Brett Beard Show. My name is Johnny Lombardi, teacher here at Denham Springs High School at the STEM Center, uh, staff uh, overseer of DSTV. Coach, thank you so much for being with us. We're super excited uh, to have you here every week here at the STEM Center for, uh, talk a little football. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on. I'm extremely excited to be uh, the head football coach at Denham Springs High School. Uh, you know, it's a dream come true. It's a, a job I've always had my eyes on. and. To have your first episode, it's, it's pretty exciting. Absolutely. We're really, really looking forward to it. And, and tell us a bit about the, the transition, what it's been like. Coming from Live Oak over here, it's been, it's been months, but it, it, it's been an interesting bunch of months here uh, in the world. Yeah. You, you know, one may say they've thrown a lot of uh, different things at a guy that's stepped into a new, a, a new program, a new situation. But, uh, you, you know, that's, that's what we're teaching these kids, to be able to face adversity, to be able to make changes, uh, you know, adjust on the fly. And that's really all. Now, all you're able to do is you build a program from from afar with COVID, and then um, you know you finally get to know these kids when you first get the job, and then you go away and you're having to communicate on huddle with them, um, you know, hoping they they've got just enough to buy into the program to where they're doing what they need to do away to uh, to be ready when they come back. And uh, you know, all the challenges has, has made it fun, but the the fact that that uh, I'm the head football coach at Denham Springs is uh, the most exciting part of everything, and. It, I couldn't be more honored and uh, could be more excited to be here. When you chose Denham Springs, when you come to, to, to Denham, what was it that you saw in this school and this program that, that made you say, I want to be there, I want to build something here? Yeah, it's always gone back to even when Coach Nettles was here when I was at Woodlaw when I first came to the Baton Rouge area. Uh, it's just always just it's just it's always appealed to me. You know, when I, when I got into this state and I wanted to climb the ranks as a head football coach in this state, to be a head coach in 5A at one of the largest schools in the state was really my ultimate goal. And uh, this being one of you know your, your second or third biggest in the state and an area I've always wanted to be, an area I always wanted to live, um, it's just always kind of been on my radar. And you know, three middle schools and you know over 2,000, almost 2,500 kids total. Um, the community, the support, uh, the old traditions, uh, you know, Coach Wax, all those men that. Uh, that have come before me, that have put everything into Denham Springs. This is uh, this is what I wanted to, to build back up to uh, to what I think could uh, could be really special. So you get the job. We have we go into the springtime, spring football, and then the pandemic hits. What what has it been like, or what was it like this summer, having to manage a program where the kids are away, all the stipulations for the LHSAA this summer? What what kind of challenges that did that present to you and the entire staff? Well, you know, I take the job November twenty second. And I'm able to, uh, I'm still at Live Oak, so I'm able to come down, you know, every once in a while, kind of check in, kind of uh, get to know these coaches from afar, making sure they're implementing what I think is, you know, the critical off-season program that we needed. Uh, kind of get to know them just enough, you know, just to kind of kind of get a feel for them so they can see how excited I am about being at Denham to, uh, to go to Christmas break, where, you know, Christmas break couldn't have ended soon enough because I was ready to get to Denham and uh, just kind of start putting – you know, your stamp on the program. And, uh, you know, we come in, they have a great January, great February. You know, we're really at a good spot. I mean, they're, they're working, they understand the kind of the protocol of how we're doing things. They, the warm up to the weight room, uh, we'd finally started our after school conditioning, uh, just kind of that, that part of the phase when this hits. Fortunately, we, we, I think we had established, you know, a program. We've established some grounds to where uh, what it takes to be a Denham Springs football player and the core values of our program to where, you know, even going away and going from afar, you know, when, you, when we first left, we're thinking, all right, we'll be back in two or three weeks. We're going to be okay. And this thing kept on and on and on. And uh, you start figuring out, well, I've got to communicate with all these kids on what we call huddle, on our huddle app. And uh, we just send them you know, little messages here and there, but we send them a weekly workout, whether it was a body weight workout or if they were they had access to weights or anything. And really at that point, you just hope they're doing it. You know, you know they're going through a lot. You know, some of them are sitting at home and you don't really know what some of them are doing. You know, I, you, I mean, heck, you don't really know what's going on with this COVID. So, I mean, you know, you just kind of sit on your hands going, well, I'm the head coach of Denham Springs, but uh, we can't really do anything. But then you and, and then you you get the news to to come back. And of course, the stipulations we we didn't care about the stipulations. If it gave us an opportunity to come together, to to be back with each other, to be back with that family, that brotherhood, we would have done any and everything they told us. Yeah. Um, you know, of course, it, it made for some for a challenge because there, there was a lot more planning. Like you know, as, as a football coach, you kind of get caught 
you have like your skeleton of the program, you know, and uh, you kind of know, all right, in June we're doing this, in July we're doing this. You know, of course you, you, you try to, to make it better every year, but, uh, you know, you get back in June and you're sitting there going, wow, this, we got 25-man pods. Everybody's got input on how we're going to attack this these summer days. And uh, I thought our coaching staff did a phenomenal job coming together and, and discussing, you know, needs, especially for where we're at. We hadn't seen these kids play ball. We hadn't seen these kids go through the spring. You know, we, we think we got some pretty good football players, but we don't really know um, because all we've seen is what's on film. You know, all we knew is what has been told to us. And a lot of times with a change, you're going you're gonna to get a different kind of kid, a different side of kid, an excited kid, uh, which sometimes as a football player with just a different type of – different coaching, different coaches talking and teaching, they may pick up on it and just be better than what, what you know on film from the year before or for what other coaches that have worked with them are saying. And uh, so we get into summer. you got the 25-man pods. You go uh, you know, 630 to 830 is defense, 830 to 1030 offense, 1030 to 1230 is freshman. And we're rolling them in uh, three different pods of weight, uh, weights, conditioning, and a football pod, kind of introducing them to everything we do, the basics of our, of our offense and our defense. And uh, you're just rolling it through there. And uh, the way they were, they were able to adapt to that. Um, and, and the way they worked, you know, it was just, it's been amazing to see the growth they had through such challenges, which alone tells me, you know, I'm in the right spot. Yeah. Do you feel like this team is, is as ready as in a, say, a normal year to come out, to come out and play? What, what differences do you see as far as preparedness with the later season and with, with everything that's been going on? Yeah, you, you know, I don't want to say we're going to be as ready you know, you're, you're no, by no means are you ever in mid-season form in week one to begin with. Yeah. Uh, but are you in week one form without a spring and without a few warm-ups, you know, that, that are, I, I mean, I, I guess are critical. Uh, we'll find out, you know, once we, once we kind of dive into this, the real season, the live situation, we'll kind of see how our training through the COVID time uh, leading into the season, how that's going to really react the athlete and the player. You know, I'm intrigued to see with the differences, um, you know, how our kids are going to respond. Um, I definitely believe our kids are ready. You, you know, no doubt with what we've done. Are we still a little basic? Yeah, we probably haven't scratched, you know, all of the surface that we've got to have offensively and defensively to be who we want to be and who we're, who we're going to be. But we are in a spot right now to where we feel we can compete with anybody. It's obviously been a very tough week for the community with Remy passing. Um, what have you seen from this team coming together and, and this community and the outpouring of support? Well, going to the community and uh, just the outpouring and everything uh, is a testament to Remy and his family. You know, uh, you know to see the fight, to see the, uh, the fight of the kid himself, to see the fight of the family through, you know, arguably your, your greatest fear and your living hell, uh, to see the way they have uh, responded, the way they fought. Um, it's just it's the, the courage. It's really, uh, you know, it's really heartwarming, though heartbreaking, to see the, the, the good people out there. The, you, you forget, you know, we're going through all this craziness that there are still a lot of great people out there. Um, the way the, the, the prayers that have, uh, that have come, the, the support that has come, the people wanting to step up and do things for him and his family has simply been amazing. Uh, you, you know, we, we, we said this morning, man, he's, he's moving mountains. You know, you see some of these relationships being formed and some of the things people are saying and, you know, some of the changes that people are talking about changing, you know, arguably because of, because of Remy and the way he lived and the way he treated people. Uh, going to the kids in the locker room, um, kids are resilient. But sometimes, you know, you, you, you have something like this happen and you realize how strong kids really are. You know, and, and you're never going to lose sight of the fact that um, when, you, when you lose someone, I've explained to them, you know, whether this is your first or you've had multiple, you know, they don't get easier. Uh, there's going to be an emotional roller coaster ride where your ups are going to be way up and your downs are going to be way down. And that uh, this brotherhood and this family is why we're going to get through this and how we're going to get through this. Uh, you know, you could say, you know, play for Remy and, and uh, you know, the different things that are coming along, if, you know, but at the end of the day, you're playing for this family, and he was a big part of this family and will always be a big part of this family. And that's, that's what you have to keep in perspective. As tough as it is, um, you know, without getting you know, too deep into things, it's probably not supposed to be said by a public teacher, but, uh, you know, 
I'm a believer in our good Lord, don't make mistakes. And uh, man's job was accomplished, and it was time for him, for him to go home. And, you know, there's a lot of lessons to be learned here at such a young age, and it's our job as the adults in the situation to make sure they are getting everything out of what they're learning from the experience, and they get everything out of what Remy was put here to do. Absolutely. And in, in the midst of all this hurt and confusion and pain, there's a season to prepare for. There's a game tomorrow night to play. Um, and, and, and moving into how, how do you make that transition from this to, hey, guys, like we got to prepare for Woodlawn. we got to pre prepare for Santa Mall. Well, you know, uh, life goes on, but forgetting the legacy Remy has left behind does not. You know, and they got to understand that. Like, they're going to have tough days, man. We've had some kids have some really tough days that just need a break. Just take a second, man. Go breathe. Go off to the side. Gather yourself. You've got to get really good at, at uh, kind of switching the light or, or turning the hat. Um, and that, that's, that all comes with uh, resiliency and the things of the game of football that we, that we try to teach in men and being able to adapt and overcome. Um, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be fun at times. And we all know that. But it's going to be worth it. You know, because at the end of the day, if, um, you know, especially these football players, had they not been on this team and got to know Remy at the depths that they did, you know, look now at what you could have been missing on. So those are the things you got to harp on. Uh, you know, you got to harp on the positive. You got to look at the positive. You got to look at the real. And, uh, you know, realistically, he would want us to do what, what he loved to do, and that was play the game and play for Denham Springs. Uh, some of the things that the mom and dad have shared with me are just, uh, you know, kind of all these shattered pieces, they kind of just, you know, put him back together with how much he loved everything that was going on and loved his teammates. And, you know, it's going to be tough, but they're, they, you know, I guess you look for whys, the, the whys of why you do things. And, you know, you add this to the list of why we're going to build Denham Springs into something special. Well, this could be a, a big start. Absolutely. And, you know, when we look forward to these games, we look at the schedule this year. Obviously, Woodlawn this week to start off in the scrimmage at Santa Ma week one, at Assumption week two. And uh, the home opener against Westgate at Yellow Jacket Stadium, and then hosting Rival Central, and going on the road for two weeks to Zachary, and then at to Live Oak, closing out the year hosting Walker and hosting Scotlandville. So when you take a look up and down the schedule, um, there's there's no breaks in this district at all. Uh, what, what do you see, and, and how do you analyze that that run of games? Another added bonus to to, to leaving Live Oak to come to Denham was I got to stay in District Four Five A. Yes, sir. Uh, huge fan. Uh, coaches, the players, the uh, the week in and week out, uh, you know, fights and rivalries and everything else. That's, that's why we do this. I mean, I, I, I love District Four Five A, and just to uh, you know, change really the color blue for the for the for the color purple and the yellow for the DS. Um, I'm still in District Four Five A and excited about that gauntlet that we play week in and week out. Uh, but then you go back to, to Santa Mom. Yeah, uh, a five-five opponent that I was a, that I was familiar with from Woodlawn uh, got after us pretty good at Livewick our first couple of years. You know, no better place to play in the pit, no better program to play against. A uh, you know class program with with David Oliver, and uh, a very true week one test. And and I've told our guys this. You know, you in the situation, there may be a confidence we have because that was our one win last year. But on the other side of the of the field is a program that is established. Those guys, you know, they, they've been with those coaches for a decade now. They they understand um, how a Friday night works. They understand the level of play that is expected, the standard of play on a Friday night, and uh, so they probably have the, the advantage there. So now we got to take that advantage and our advantage, and we got to figure out how to how to put it all together. Uh, Assumption and Westgate, two games that you know, one that got away. Uh, late, one that got away early. Uh, one thing I know about the attitude of Denham Springs now is the excitement to, to have that chip on their shoulder to get back out against those opponents because they feel like they let, I don't want to say let them go or, or let them off the hook, but you know, that's the facts. And uh, to, to be able to, uh, to get that taste out of your mouth, we couldn't be more excited to get into all these opportunities. Looking at this week's game, uh, scrimmage against Wood, uh, Woodlawn, what are you looking for from your guys? What are some boxes that you're saying, hey, we want to check these this week? Uh, what, are, what are you looking for to see on Thursday? Well, we want to see our quarterbacks execute and run our offense. You, you know, sometimes you don't always have to make the home run throw because there's a lot of butts in the stands looking at you and watching you. And, you know, you're putting pressure on yourself. You always got to you know, hit the home run, and that's not the case. 
take what they give you, run our offense. I'm excited to see that. Uh, of course, the, the ultimate deciding factor in everything we do is going to be the trenches, um, O-line, D-line play. Uh, very excited about both sides, very excited about the depth on both sides. Uh, it just comes down to those two big groups of, of young men getting the job done together, working together. And uh, ultimately, you know, we're going to go where the O-line takes us. And this is what you have to have as you begin to put those pieces together and you gel that camaraderie of those five, or that camaraderie of those five, you have to have these moments. And uh, you know, I'm excited to see what they do. You know, I'm just excited to see these kids play. You, you know, I know a lot of these kids from the past and game planning and game planning against them and seeing them on film, but it's not the same now because of the relationship I have with these kids and they've put everything and poured everything into this program for me and for this coaching staff and for this school to the point now to where all the, all the hard stuff's done. Now, now go have fun. Go play. And uh, let them be kids. And that's, that's what I'm excited about watching. Absolutely. Coach, we're looking forward to it. Looking forward to a great season. We'll see yeah. you here next week's show. We'll wrap up the uh, Woodlawn highlights and look forward to Santa Mall. Uh, my name is Johnny Lombardi. I'll only be here one more week, and then you'll get to talk to students. So only awesome. one more week for awesome. me. Uh, this is the first episode of the Brett Beard Show. Thank you all for watching, and uh, we'll see you next week. Go Jackets.